everybody to Bedbug TV. I'm your host, Jeff White. And in today's episode, I want to talk to everybody about the different dust applications that you can do for bed bug control, some of the different tools that are out there, and what my opinion are in regards to the different pros and cons which eat with each method. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is take a step back and say that no matter what dust you're applying for bed bug control, you want to make sure you're reading the label directions on those dusts. It's very important because they're going to tell you possibly how to apply it, but also where you can apply it and for what bugs. And so you want to follow the label directions at all times, no matter what you're doing. Um, secondly, why are we applying dust for bed bug control? Well, dust can be one of the more effective tools that we have for bed bugs. You know, research has shown that the dust will actually adhere to the bug's exoskeleton, and a lot of them work in different ways, but either dry the bug out or expose it to an active ingredient that will then kill the bug itself. And so dust can be one of the most effective tools we have for bed bug control. Not to mention, dust are typically applied in cracks and crevices, which is where bed bugs are typically hiding. And so as far as I'm concerned, dusts are a must when it comes to bed bug control. And so when it comes to the application of those dusts, you really have two different formulations of dust. You have what we have in these two dusters right here, which is a loose dust. Typically it's white in color. Um, lots of different formulations, all natural, some of them have active ingredients inside them. But the bottom line is you put them in a dust applicator and you put it in the crack and crevice itself. Now, the pros to this is that it's very effective for bed bug control because it's a loose dust and as a bug walks by, it will typically statically stick to the bug, dry it out, or treat it with that active ingredient. And they can be extremely effective for bed bug control. The con to these is that at times applying that dust can be difficult so that it doesn't actually become airborne or come back out of that crack or crevice. And so I'll show you that in a second and, and some of the things you need to be aware of. The other formulation of dust is what I have here, which is an aerosolized dust. It comes out of this aerosol can and this straw. You put it in your crack and crevice, you apply it. It's going to spray in there, stick to the surface, and dry. The, con to, the pro to that is that it's controlled. You're getting it in, it's sticking to the surface. The con is that it's not the loose dust that we talked about before, and therefore it may not statically adhere to the bug quite as well as that loose dust will. And so, what I want to do is show you the different ways you can apply these dusts and, and things that you need to consider. So when we talk about applying dust for bed bugs, we're talking about cracks and crevices and voids inside walls. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about these two areas right here. We have an electrical outlet that the cover's been removed, and you can see this void around the electrical box, which we're going to treat. And then you have this, I think it's a phone box of some sort, old phone line box, and, and bugs will commonly get behind these. And so that's the other area that we're going to treat. And so what we'll do is we'll start with probably the more, most common option, which is a dust bulb. And so what you have is you have your loose white dust inside this bulb. You're going to put it in this area and you're going to squeeze it. And dust is going to come out. Now, these can be very good tools for applying dust to these areas. The dust is going to go in there, it's going to settle on the surface. As a bug walks by, it's going to statically hopefully stick to it. And here you can see I'm getting the, the actual tip inside around the box and applying my dust which is good because the dust is getting into that wall void when i come down to this crack or crevice down here and do the same thing you can see that some of the dust filtered down because it didn't actually go into that crack and then when i do get it to go in the crack you see how it comes out of the top right there a little bit that can be one of the risks to using loose dusts is that if you're treating cracks and crevices it can easily come back out of the, the actual crack or become airborne. Now, if it comes out like that and you know applies to the top surface or down here like this, I would take a vacuum and go ahead and remove that dust. Um, hopefully in a controlled fashion, again, you want to read the label directions that may indicate how to remove that dust if you misapply it. But uh, a, a vacuum with a HEPA filter may be a way that you could do that. And you can go ahead and clean that up. Also, you can take a wet cloth such as I have over here, go ahead and dampen that cloth and go ahead and wipe the dust off the surface. That may actually be even the best way to do it. Now, you saw though the misapplication, and so that's the concern with loose dust. Now, if you wanted to treat an area like this with a loose dust, one way you could go is this brush right here. If you dip this brush in the loose dust and just go ahead and lightly sprinkle it in those areas, that may be a controlled way to apply that dust, and totally possible, and I've done it myself in certain situations. The one thing you need to be aware of, though, is it's very time consuming. And so if you're a pest control company watching this, imagine going through a house and using this to dust the entire house. You might be there for a week. 
And so this is more of a localized application as far as I'm concerned. But it's something you can consider. Here though we have also a power duster. This is the Exacticide Duster by Technicide. And this is a great tool. I mean, I know a lot of companies that have this and use it, you know, a lot. It helps them save a lot of time when dusting an entire house like this. And how you would use it is again, you would go ahead and take the tip here, put it in this area, and hit the trigger. And it's going to mechanically apply that dust into that void. It's also going to break that dust up so it comes out like a good cloud of dust, which helps it you know, spread inside that area. What you want to do though is you want to make sure you're getting it inside the area. Because you can see when I back out a little bit, you start to get that dusting coming out of the void. Again, just make sure you're getting the straw deep inside there. Now, if you're going to a crack that we showed before with the tri die, I uh, not tri die, with the dust bowl, and you're going to treat that area, you know, if I do the same thing with this device in that area on the same speed, you're going to see the same thing happens. Now, don't take that as an end all because these actually have a power control right on them. And so you can go into this area and start to uh, apply it in a lighter fashion. But even on the lowest setting, you can see you're still getting some dust coming out of that area. You can do it in here on that lighter, lighter setting, which will help you control it a little bit better. And so, when it comes to small cracks and crevices like this, this, this foam box I showed you a second ago, I'm not sure how comfortable I would feel applying a loose dust behind there. Because you saw that you know, the dust is coming out, and, and no matter how low I turned that power duster, or no matter how gently I squeezed this dust bulb, you still have a tough time controlling it. That's where I think the aerosolized dust really fit in. You know, you take this straw, you put it in that area, and you go ahead and spray a little aerosolized dust in there. You saw a little dust come out at first, but that before was from the uh, loose dust I just applied in there. So now if I go and do it again, you can see that that dust is staying in there. It's not coming out of the sides like we saw before. And so this aerosolized dust may be a better option for small cracks and crevices like that. The loose dust, I think, is a much better option for around these sockets and switch plates. Um, and so again, it's really about where you're dusting and the different options that are available to you. And honestly, we use all these things. The power duster, I think, is a great option for large scale dusting. You can cover a lot of ground in a short amount of time, especially when you're doing an inside wall voids or around sockets and switch plates. So it's a great option, and I know a lot of companies that use them. The dust bulb is the cheaper option. Um, I know a lot of companies, and this is actually my tool of choice when it comes to dusting. Um, but again, you know, you, you don't have a ton of control how it's coming out and the volume it's coming out. It's all about how hard you squeeze it, and even that can be inconsistent. Um, but again, I think this is the cheapest and sometimes easiest option. You have your paintbrush we talked about before for localized. And then your aerosolized dust for what I think are cracks and crevices that aren't real deep and you need the dust to stay in there. And so those are our different dust applications. Um, as I said before, you know, follow those label directions. It's really important. They're going to tell you how to do this and where you can do it. If you have any mistakes, you can use a cloth to wipe up those loose dust areas, a vacuum if any large piles form, and then, you know, if anything dries to the surface, you can always go ahead and rub it off. You want to be careful with your aerosolized dust because it can stain finished furniture. If you misapply it on a finished piece of furniture, it will remove the finish sometimes. And so you want to be careful around finished furniture. Um, and that's applying dust for bed bugs. One last point, some of the labels on these, especially with diatomaceous earth, will allow you to just dump some of these dusts on the floor. While that may be okay by label, that is really not the advisable way to apply a dust. Just dumping it on the floor not just exposes the person in the room to the dust, Bed bugs don't typically just live out on the floor like that, and so that's really not going to achieve a lot of good. You know, the bugs will just avoid those large piles and go find somewhere else to a, a walk and, and function. And so you really want to be applying all of these dusts in cracks, crevices, and voids. All right, everybody, if you have any questions about dust application, jeff.white at bedbugcentral.com. We have other episodes on Bedbug TV about different types of dust and what might be the best option for certain settings, and I hope to see everybody soon enough.